I'm Courtney Lawrence. I'm a peer mentor and also part of the Rose College program. I'm Jordan Kelly. I'm a senior and a also a peer mentor for the Rose College program. And I'm Kirsty. I'm the new program counselor for the Rose College program, and they're helping present um, the first impressions workshop with me. So, um, first impressions. So you think about job interviews and job fairs and networking with people who may potentially hire you. So that's why we're having this workshop so you'll know um, how to put on a good first impression. Um, okay, so first I have an activity. Okay, so first, on this sheet of paper, on one of them, you write your um your interests and what food you like, all that kind of stuff. Write about you first. So just answer these questions about you. Yeah, I could do it too. <laughs> no, no, no. Jordan's like, I'm chilling. <laughs> All right, and then when you finish, let's try to pair up with somebody that you don't know. Rachel, you want Can y'all finish? No, not yet. No, okay. I'll give you some more time. Favorite food, favorite music, or whatever other questions I ask you. you. Look at them and try to figure out what you think their interests. And then beside that, write like something like why you indicated that. So say like if your favorite sport, say like they had on the Eagles jersey and you like, oh, then their favorite team is the Eagles, <laughs> you know, because of their shirt, something like that. Just take a few minutes. Trust me, I got a point here. It's not crazy. <laughs> That's why they don't make you put it on. She used to go, okay, what should you try? She is not. So I come to the thing. But she's going to have a look. Okay, when you finish, just. Okay, go back and forth. Don't judge a book by its cover, all that. But if in like job interviewing and stuff, or like at a job fair, that's what's gonna happen. They they're doing everything backwards. So um, I mean, when you're trying to get a job, 
they're meeting like a thousand different people. They're going to be impressed by, you know, how you look or how you dress. But we're going to talk about all that in a minute. Well, you can get back in your seat. <laughs> but it, does, it is weird. But we're going to change that, you know, in a minute. It's not going to feel so good. What do y'all think about that? I've heard that multiple times over the years. It's true. It's very true. Yeah. Uh, I hope I hope that I hope that many times too, but not that hope so, but that they judge they like judge the book by its cover, so like judge the person. Yeah. Like if the person say could could speak clearly but could do the job, they judge just by the speech to see the qualifications. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean they are judging on different things, but it's how you dress, how you talk to them, or how you make them feel while you're talking to them. Um, but we'll get into that later on in the presentation. So what do you think are some things you can do to prepare for an interview or a job fair? Or a networking event. No. no one that definitely to have to practice on the interview skills, like if it's the interview be law you could do you and practice, practice on the interview, yeah. Repetitiously definitely. That's a good one. Practice the interviewing. Research the, the company. Research the, the company. <laughs> yep. Break your know your strengths. Know your strengths. So like brag on yourself a little bit. Oh, yeah, bragging. <laughs> Anybody else? I mean, y'all you know, hit on some good ones. Uh, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. So, hey. <laughs> so, um, three things to remember for preparation. You want to research the company, make sure you're dressed and groomed properly, and have your resume in order. Do y'all agree on those things? All right, these are important for making a good first impression. So resumes. Yep, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about resumes. Um, there are five critical elements, as you see on the board. Um, contact information, summary, objective, skills, relevant experience, and education. So for contact information, you need to make sure that it's always up to date because if you have outdated information, then the company won't be able to contact you if you do impress them and have the job. So you want to make sure all emails, um, phone numbers, and things of that nature are all up to date. Oh, yeah. Also, remove the hyperlink from your email address when you uh, have your resume because you just want to make sure that your resume is completely and highly professional. Okay? Your summary and objective is crucial because it shows what you have done and what you can bring to the organization and um, what your interests are while you're and why you're applying for this job. Um, for your skills, you need to... Make sure that you have a detailed and specific um, specific examples of what kind of skills that you've done for other companies. And you want to make sure that you have, um, oh yeah, make sure it's exactly what you want the job for. So, like, if I was trying to apply for, res continue to apply for Res Life, like RHD position as Kirstie has done before, I would <laughs> tell them what I have done in Res Life. Um, I said skills, right? Okay. There we go. Ooh, my bad, y'all. <laughs> what if you're trying to get your first job and don't have much experience? Well, you can kind of just tell them what you um what you can bring to the table. Yeah. So, like, what kind of personal interpersonal skills do you have? Just based off of like your classes, there are also some things in yeah, your classes. Like volunteer experience. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Actually, he has some handouts, too, that I'll give to you um, about developing your resume. Yeah, and I have some on the cover letter. So, and when he finishes, 
Oh, you're fine. Sorry. No, you're fine. Okay, relevant experience, um, you want to specifically include all the job duties that you have done for other companies. Make sure that you have, um, you have the job title, the name of the company, and the dates that you have, um, that you were employed with them. And finally, for education, you want to include all of the up-to-date education that you have. So your um, college, what, however many colleges that you've gone to, you want to make sure that you have that. And also um, the dates in which you attended and your um, expected graduation date. Also, with keeping up with um, content information, if your expected graduation date changes, then you need to make sure that you have that so they know when you graduate and know when you'll be available for them to hire you. Also, if you need resident, I mean, resume building assistance, you can go to the Career Center um, and they have, they can just sit down with you, help you build your resume, then if you already have a resume, they can also um, help you correct it if there needs to be any correction. So, Bilal, I'll say go check in with the Career Center and they can help you add more to your resume if you yeah. don't have job experience. And definitely volunteer experience yeah. is good. Yeah, even if it was back in high school, some of it. Um, yeah, what year? I think it depends on yeah, the year. Just depends on what it is. Yeah, and what it Ooh. is. Yeah, how Spe relevant it is to what you're trying to do. Right. Speaking of high school, I know a lot of people put high school on their resume. If you went to college, you don't need to do that because clearly, if you're in college, they know you went to high school. So right. You don't need to do that. Yeah. Oh, good. Good tips. Okay. Um, so, research the company. You, you got to turn into a detective right here. How many of y'all are like CSI? Or what's the other one with um, NCIS? NCIS or Scandal? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to treat this like, I don't know, you, you're Olivia Pope or something from Scandal. So you want to research the company, look at their website. If they got a Facebook page, go check out their page and see what they're posting. Do y'all do these things? Has anyone did that in the past? <laughs> yeah. Um, I read this somewhere. Like some companies, depending on like what kind of job you're trying to get, they give presentations and they put them on YouTube. Maybe you could look back at a video and say like, oh, I heard you did this presentation. I wanted to ask you more questions about that. You know, like, because you got to ask questions at the end of the interview. So that can be, like, a question you can ask, like, about a presentation they did. And make sure it's recent, not, like, three years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, Google them. I put this third because, like, it's not, like, the only way you can find out about a company. You can do, like, this stuff first. Like, research their website. Um, and if you know people who work with the company or the business you're trying to work for, definitely talk to them about it. So you want to do your homework. And you could figure out, like, we're going to talk about this next, but looking at the environment, how they dress there, what kind of personalities they have, so it's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wear that, okay. They like the color red, okay, I'm going to wear a red tie when I go. <laughs> I don't know, but definitely do your research. Question about it, Joshua? Well, actually, for all the have question about actually about the resume, resume. Well, what I've noticed that they said some companies will want your stuff you did in high school, to, but depend on what company it is. Some companies want your high school information. Yeah, like if you did for a team thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some type of that's a whole recently. Yeah, I would say around. if it's relevant to the company. And yeah, you, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so. I would definitely put it in there. Then. Uh, but don't quote me on it because I'm not an expert. That's why we're like, make sure you talk to the career center, uh, okay. you know, your other resources. But don't look over that before you go into your interview. Okay. Yeah. Any more questions so far? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you want to make a good impression when you first walk in. And one of the first things that we do, unfortunately, when we judge people is. How they look. Yeah. For example, when I come in late, y'all all look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> I was, Don't do that on an interview. Yeah. That's bad. <laughs> <laughs> she hates me right now. No, um, no but no, there's a few things that you should kind of should keep in mind of what's appropriate and what's not for a job interview. 
for women, the main thing is conservative, neutral. You don't want to be too loud and overbearing, but not too boring. Yeah, I guess. boring. Yeah. yeah. Um, so things that you definitely want to remember, um, make sure your clothes fit well. Um, solid colors are good. If you're going to do print, be kind of careful what you're doing. You don't want like a whole lot of print going on because that's loud and distracting. Um, yeah, if you're wearing like pantyhose or whatever's underneath, make sure it's what it's supposed to be. Um, dress according to the season, so probably don't wear a skirt when it's, you know, 20 degrees outside. That's not fun. It's kind of hard to dress to the season here, though, when it's changing. Tell me about it. I yeah. Here, and I was like, maybe I should have. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially like your nails, especially women, like we like to wear bright red fingernail polish. It's probably not bright the best. Blue. Uh, <laughs> For this particular case, um, so yeah, you just neat, unfairly neutral color or French, something like that. Um, and then for hair, and this goes for girls and guys, you want to be like, put some effort into it so it's like neat and looks like it's not going all over the place. Um, so like a ponytail like this, if you have longer hair, if you're a girl, if your hair is longer than shoulder length, it needs to be up. Um, if it's shoulder length or shorter, you can wear it down, but make sure there's purpose to it. Same thing with guys, like, make sure it doesn't look like you just rolled out of bed like most of my guy friends and just stuck a hat on. It's probably not the best look we're going for. Um, and sometimes you could feel out the company too. Yeah. Like, I definitely wear my natural arrow, like, if I go to the interview, like, but I'll make sure it looks neat. Like, you right. just want to be kept, you know, look like you put some effort into it and not just rolled out of bed. And no flashy jewelry. You don't want like a whole lot of that going on. Um, but like something simple, like if you're gonna wear pearls or like a simple necklace or simple earrings, something like that for girls. Um, guys, probably not a whole lot of jewelry. <laughs> um, perfume, if you're gonna wear it, very very minimal. Same for cologne because some people are allergic, and you don't want to be that person that you step on the elevator and you're like, oh my god, I'm gonna pass out because all that smell. Even if it's good, <laughs> it's a lot for um, someone to take in this first impression. And what if somebody got to dismiss you because they're allergic to your perfume? Mm -hmm. Like, that would suck. It's not good. Yeah, because they're allergic. Mm -mm. Um, make sure for girls also your makeup. You don't want a super bright, loud clown look. We want like very neutral, natural look. Um, and if you don't really know how to do makeup and you want to wear something, I'd suggest YouTube has a ton of videos. You can look it up. Um, and then also, like, just the style of clothes you're going to wear. We try to do an example, some different ones. Um, oh, try it. So, like, <laughs> it's going to depend on the job. You need to tailor how you're going to dress. And my mom, she used to hire a lot. She said, always dress for the job you want, not the job you currently have. So if you're a college student right now, your uniform is jeans and sneakers and probably a CFC hoodie. That's typically what I wear. Probably don't wear that to the interview. You're going to want to dress for wherever you're going. So I work um, in the senator's office. So this is actually what I wore for my first interview. So it's a little more dressy than maybe you might do. Like, I know here at the war office, we're a lot more laid back. Right. I would say um, it's better to be slightly overdressed than underdressed. Mm -hmm. Cause like I work for Res Life for their um, selection committee, and people would come up with jeans and a t-shirt or pajamas like they were all out of bed because we're not like an uptight company, but we're Res Life, Residence Life and Housing on campus, so they don't think, oh, I have to dress up for this interview. But yes, you do, cause we're judging you. They're like, oh, you don't really care. Okay. Like, you're not taking it seriously. So definitely put some effort into your outfit. Or maybe you could call the receptionist office and say, hey, what are you guys wearing there? I don't know. Like, do some detective work, like I said. <laughs> yeah, definitely tailor it to the job that you're going for. Yeah. For sure. Um, Does anything stand out or surprise y'all about it? Oh, uh, the hair. The hair? Pull bit? I mean, because I have really long hair. Yeah. I never thought about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you don't want to bother it while you. Well, usually I have it like pinned back, but like I can understand where it's like on my shoulder, and I like brush it off. So yeah, like I guess like if you do like a ponytail like this, as long as it's like a nice ponytail, not like 
too crazy or you can do like a bun. I do that sometimes. So doesn't she look cute? Like, yeah, you can definitely do that. Oh, we got a little bit of some shoe. <laughs> We're gonna give y'all some examples of what yeah. shoe and shoe not to wear. Right. So like shoes, I know with females we have a hard time trying to figure out oh what kind of shoes to wear. Too many options. So I mean if you do flats, make it look I guess like that. Like a conservative look, but you don't wanna wear like your club heels. Yeah, you don't. You don't uh, <laughs> so this is probably this length of heel. It's maybe two inches. That's probably about as high. Right. As that's decent. That would be appropriate. Um, and it's a neutral color. Like she's not being too fleshy here. Yeah. And I don't your know toes about, are gonna show. It's probably better if they don't. But if they do, make sure those nails are also right. Good to go. Any questions about the shoes? So now we're gonna do another activity, kind of. What's your first impression of this person? Professional. Okay. Fish what else? else? Good and bad. Everything that. What do you think when you see her? She seems conservative. Mm -hmm. What else? She looks angry. Yeah, you can see in the <laughs> in particular, it's like not ironed at all back there. It's very wrinkly. And here it's actually way too tight. If it's doing that across there, yeah, it's probably not the best um, look. But in general, this outfit would be appropriate. But like someone pointed out, she does look unhappy. That's not the first. You want to smile when you see someone for the first time. And they're hopefully going to make a good connection with them. So they'll want to bring you back. I mean, I can see, like, she's probably going for the sophisticated business type, but mm -hmm. still, like, you want to be a little relaxed. Yeah, exactly. And then also her shoes. She's got, like, green, everything else going on. Going on. There's a lot going on, and it doesn't really go with what she's wearing. Her hair, not terrible, but she could probably do a little bit better with it. <laughs> I'm going to be really, like, scrutinizing so y'all can kind of see every little thing. Her legs are... Do the interviewers scrutinize in their heads? It's one of those things, once you've like, interviewed enough people, you start to just, you don't even realize what it is sometimes. But a lot of times someone will see someone like this, I'm like, I like them, but there's something like, I just don't feel like they're as put together as they could be. And, and it, they might not even realize, <laughs> well, it's because it's frankly or something like yeah. that. And it definitely depends on where you're trying to work to. Mm -hmm. Like how far they'll go as to look at. For every little detail, you know what I mean? Like for a campus job? Right, so if yeah. she came in for a campus job, they would be like, she put on a suit, like, exactly. <laughs> she put in some effort. But if you're going for like one of those five, fortune, whatever. Fortune five. Fortune five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what you meant. <laughs> companies, like, they probably would not hire her looking like that, you know? It just depends on who your competition is and where you're working at. If they have a ton of people, any little thing can be the difference. But if they don't have as many, then right. the fact she might have shown up in a suit might have done the trick. It just depends on where you're at. Right. So, what else we got? What about her? What do you think about her? Her top to me. That's the same, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have to say, Jordan? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're not going there. <laughs> Would y'all hire her? Lots of black. I'm not sure that's a good or bad thing. Of course not. <laughs> you wouldn't hire her? No, I mean, I'm not sh I don't know how they look at those. I think I would hire her. She seems put together. They're, it's not really as wrinkly as the last photo, but we don't have a back shot to compare. <laughs> right. So from here she looks neat and her outfit is not professional. Her. Yeah, it is professional. So I think this is maybe a little bit better, but there's definitely things good and bad about this. Um, like someone said, her hair is not bad, but it is longer than shoulder length, so she probably should have it up in some way. Um, but if you're going to wear it down and it is shorter, that kind of look would be 
perfectly appropriate. I think the hairstyle sure. works. Might be up a little tiny bit. Mm -hmm. Depends on where you're at. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely not as bad as it could be for sure. Um, but one thing I liked about her is her makeup. It's not like too much. It still looks fairly natural. And that's something you really, for a girl, it's very important. So that's what you said, be conservative, mm -hmm. like yeah. myself. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely, for a girl, don't want a really low cut shirt that's, or skirt that's like way up high. It's not good. Typically, they say about knee length, maybe a little bit above. Yeah, let it touch your knees or below. Guys, y'all are so much easier. Y'all have so many choices. <laughs> <laughs> but see, and then I'm like, Taylor, I would think, you know, her hair looks nice. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a third rabbit on here. <laughs> I guess if it was applying for construction, that might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'd say, same, depending on the level of construction. Depending. <laughs> What kind of work? He could probably get away with it. I think. You know, I would hire him. Yeah. I would hire him. Like you say, you don't know how to do office work, but you know, whatever. I can just look at you. Josh? No. Josh? 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 He seems to be good for a man. He's like looking around like, I'll make sure you do your job, do what each text you're supposed to do. That's how you see him through his stack show His shirt looks like he just rolled out of bed with it, though. Mm. Yeah, you can even That's see like his belt. Yeah, it's not even tucked in. Yeah, it's not even tucked in. I think he might have done this look on purpose for whatever he was doing at the time. Yeah. But I mean, like, his hair is kind of all over the place. He's not clean shaven. Like, it's okay to have, like, facial hair as a guy as long as there's point to it. <laughs> he had to put in like, yeah. yeah. Like, as in, it has to be grooved, not just random scrub. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. He needs to cut his beard too, because that's like, oh, it's because that make yeah. it not good, he will be high. So. Exactly. Well, like I said, I think Brad Pitt probably can get away with it, but I do like this picture because, <laughs> one, that's it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> But the way just he kind of comes across to me in this picture, I don't know about anybody else, like, he's fairly confident. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else get that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's something, like, you don't want to ever seem overconfident when you're going in for a job, but you need some confidence in yourself. So. Like, sorry if I'm asking too many questions, but, like, since I'm, I haven't really held a job job, just volunteering, like, how do I get that confidence if I've never, you know, had an actual job before and mm -hmm. looking to like enter the workforce or make it, make it. this job. Fake he said, make it. That's very true. Um, but I don't know if there's a definite answer for it. It's something it will come with time. It'll yeah. get easier. Um, Maybe just feeling comfortable with what you're doing. Like if you're prepared and you go in, you're going to feel better. A certain body language and attitude. Probably. It's kind of like going into class when you haven't done your homework. You probably don't feel so confident when that pop quiz shows up. But, right. but if you've already done your reading and you go in there and a pop quiz, you're like, well, I wasn't expecting this. It makes me a little nervous, but you're going to feel better. Mm -hmm. And find other things that you have done that you're proud of that make you stand out in your mind. Like, look at your resume. Be happy with it. Make sure it has things that you're really proud of. And then when you go in there, you're like, I'm different. This makes me unique. And that's going to give you more confidence as well. Yeah. And another thing is that also how you can build your confidence is like you try different levels of job. Mm -hmm. Like like working on campus, then move next. So let's say work at Walmart. That mm. should do what you would do in your career field. So to get the basic experience. job experience that. Yeah, I agree with it. Getting an experience. Especially your first time. That you can do it. Like that'll give you confidence too. Yeah. Especially Just your first it. time, even if you have a disability, you know, so it's like that. I got you. And you yeah. can probably yeah. solve autism as well so that might get in the way for interviews and stuff like i'm kind of scared of job interviews actually i'm oh, terrified too maybe yeah i think i think everyone gets nervous about mm -hmm. job interviews like but practicing and practicing with someone else maybe will help too yeah, definitely. yeah. top of the career center for sure and then i will admit i have a condition called chronic fatigue syndrome most people haven't heard of it i don't even know if y'all know this uh -huh. um I got it my junior year of high school, and I bring this up because up until then, like, I was a straight-A student. I had no problems. I spoke very clearly, never mispronounced a word or said the wrong word. And I don't, they don't really know a whole lot about it, but it's 
they believe it's a virus that just kind of stays with you mm -hmm. and it can actually make my brain swell oh. and it will mess with my mind and I noticed it mostly when I was doing math because in trigonometry which I was really good at math I kept flipping quadrants well then they actually tested me and I could not like recall certain words that I had known like my whole life so even now like I'm really self-conscious about it most people probably don't notice or even no, y'all probably will but once I point it out, like, people start to see it. But it's something I'm really aware of. And so when something like I go to an interview, it's like they don't understand that. They don't know what's going on. So it's something that if you're aware of it, you're going to be more cognizant of it. You may not want to explain it because, like, obviously for this, it's a long story. But um, yeah. you could always talk. Um, if you do have any type of disability like that, SNAP office probably can help you also know about how to deal with that in this particular case, and then talk with the career center as well. That's some good information. I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, with SNAP, they have coaching sessions that support school that yep. actually, that's Actually, that's what it's called. Coaching? Uh, yes, coaching. sessions. And that's where you'll get some practice with interviewing and things like that? Yeah, because that's where actually I go at for coaching sessions. Oh, okay. Cool. So what are we thinking about this guy? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely not him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Me too, yeah. He, he looks sharp and silver <laughs> tip, not too much. He's on yeah. the top of my list. Right <laughs> yeah. He seems to be... Wait, wait, wait. He's better than Brad Pitt. Yes. 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 Oh. I mean, because he's all put Amazing. together. Yes, he looks... So say, now, what's the difference there? He's His hair's polished. brushed. Mm -hmm. He looks more professional. He has that a tie on. And uh, things that he will upset your company real well, such as a, a bad situation, yeah. if something goes wrong because someone else they yeah. do their part. He Just saying. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was sad to call the pictures. He's not serious <laughs> about what he's doing. He's very yeah. Yeah. Um, shit. So yeah, one thing as a guy, make sure you know how to tie, tie, wear a tie properly. I can't help you with that, I don't know. <laughs> Probably should, but then I have to. That oh. can be some prepping work. Learn how to yeah. tie your tie. There's definitely information out there if you don't know. YouTube. Just look for it. YouTube. Oh, yep. YouTube. <laughs> um, but typically the general business look for a guy is going to be some sort of suit and tie and button down shirt type. So yeah, see, y'all thought I forgot about all the guys. Very similar to the women that I did touch on a lot of this. Um, make sure your clothes fit, wear more solid colors. This goes for men and women. If you're wearing some sort of suit, it's probably going to be more neutral color. Um, but then underneath, you can wear a little bit brighter. Um, if you want a little bit of fun in there, that's how I would do that. <laughs> um, yeah, make sure you're clean shaven, however that is to you. Um, Belt apparently is supposed to match your shoes. I just learned that from, I think, Drawers told me that the other day. Really? Yeah, he told me I a lot. I read in old boards. Yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> he learned a lot. He also told me apparently um, for your jacket as a guy, if there's three buttons or two buttons, you always leave the bottom one undone. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. So, I don't yeah. know, but I heard it. <laughs> and when you sit down, something. I'm going to tell you all my little secret. Go to like Ross or Marshalls or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, you will find a $100 or $200 suit, and it will be, like, $30, $40. Right. Max. <laughs> but, I mean, like, if, you, if you're on a budget, because we're in college and we are, that's just how it is. Yeah. Like, I suggest looking around places like that, and you'll find what you need. And then you can get it fitted later. Um, so, dark socks that go with shoes-ish. Mm -hmm. um, it should be fairly conservative. Um... For guys, you're probably going to want to take a portfolio or briefcase. One, you should always have an extra resume with you, because you never know. You might need to refer to it yourself, because they might pull out <clears throat> something and you're like, wait, what are we talking about again? Um, or they might ask, also ask for another copy, because something happened to you or someone else has it at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure you have that with you. And then um, women, we tend to forget about our purses. We just grab like our general handbag and go out the door which is what I did today. I'll do that. <laughs> Get something that's fairly neutral. So like I have a solid black purse that I can fit paperwork into that'll go with any darker outfit or you can get like a khaki color or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, or you can also do a briefcase, but depends on what you're most comfortable with. Don't wear wrinkled clothes, flashy jewelry, or too much clothing.
are we all happy about grooming and dressing? Oh, and one thing. I'm going to watch. Yeah. Oh, the watch? Yeah, so this is something funny that I learned somewhere. Um, they say not to really wear a watch to an interview. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How many of you have heard that? Mm. Yeah, that's what I thought. I hadn't heard it either for a long time. Um, and the reason is when someone's wearing a watch, one, if you naturally wear a watch, you have this habit of checking it. Just even if you don't need to, you just check it anyhow. Um, and even if you don't, it still gives the appearance of you're kind of in a hurry, you have somewhere else to be, um, even if that's not the case. And so it's something subconscious that people can pick up about you that you don't want an interviewer to pick up. So even if you do tend to wear a watch, I'd probably avoid it for this <laughs> hour or so. She just, she just suggests that, but you know. You are your own people. <laughs> okay, so social media. Take that in. You know, a lot going on. Okay, so there are a lot of different social networks that we use. LinkedIn, Facebook. What do y'all use? LinkedIn. LinkedIn, Facebook. Then you Facebook. Anybody use Google Plus? Me. Yeah. Okay, so they're out there. Um... So just like we research companies, they're probably going to research you. And like, you want to make sure your social network, well, social media, whatever looks good and decent for um, whoever's um, watching out for you. So make sure you watch out for typos. Like, now you can edit things on Facebook, so that shouldn't be an issue. It's like, there's no excuse now. Or just the it. I don't know. Um, go to your photo. Like, <laughs> like, shorthand, like, you is actually the letter U. If, like, that's constant what you have up there. That's it's probably, probably not going to look good. Yeah. yeah. Photos are, that are decent, so that makes you look, like, I don't know. Not, like, the party solo cup pictures everywhere. But, you know, you can untag yourself. You can. I've done that. <laughs> Delete them. Um, Whatever. I'm going to tell a funny story about that. Um, and another good point, consistency on each site. So, like, if you have a LinkedIn and a Facebook, don't just think, like, oh, LinkedIn is for my business stuff. And Facebook <laughs> is <laughs> my real stuff. No, don't do that. So make sure it's, like, consistent. The things that you have accomplished are reflected on both sites like because they're probably going to check both you check their website and their youtube page and you google them you don't think they're going to do the same thing um and what else did i have to say about this oh i was going to say something funny about photos uh-huh um a lot of times things can get misconstrued um for example, like I said, I do work in the senator's office, and I had to sign a contract when they hired me that I can't have anything related to the office on my Facebook page. And here's why. Because they told me this story of they have interns who are volunteers. They're not paid or anything else, but they volunteer their time to work and learn in the senator's office. Well, a few of them got together after work one day, went out, had a drink or two together, 21, totally fine. Well, they put it up on Facebook. Well, it's politics. What do you think the other, um, their opponent in the race <laughs> decided to do? They were also doing their research and they found this picture. So then this is what they did. They took that picture and they put, this is my senator's name. This is his staff. This is his team. And then they took and posed with all of them in nice business suits sitting around a table looking like a Fortune 500 <laughs> business meeting. And this is our staff. Mm -hmm. Here's your choice. Completely out of context, but that's what everyone in South Carolina saw. So mm -hmm. you kind of want to be aware, even if it seems innocent, if it's taken out of context, it can be really bad in a hurry. Right. And I've heard like from a lady who does hire and she said, it really depends on the people because she said if you have a decent see the private your page that's a good look um because you know of course nothing on the internet truly gets to be it but if you had a decent see the private um your page or delete some inappropriate photos 
Yes. I have questions you said, like, I know that they say it's good to Google your name on the internet, because yeah. I guess make sure, I guess, we to, like, make sure good things follow you. Right. Like, now some their posts could, could be, like, something did something in your name, be not Will's, but then when you see the internet, be like, so that's why they get a drug, because someone who put in my name, I had nothing to do with. Right. Like, I just, I mean, that could happen, because I just thought about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely, they're going to Google your name. Google your name to see what written about you or associated with your name and um also your posts so the things that you post online if it's politically related i don't know you might want to be careful be careful yeah because you could say something that could just i don't know it's your opinion but that opinion didn't get you the job so be careful about what you post post on um, educated articles or something like that or Something might look nice. I don't know. Like, don't fake your face, but don't ever try to be someone that you're not. But no, but be careful of how you come across. Yeah, I think it's good to show that you talk about more than just what you ate that day. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Your followers probably appreciate that too. (laughs) So eight nonverbal um impressions. Can you think of? Something that you might do in a nonverbal way that can have a good first impression on someone. Stand up straighter. Uh huh. Rachel, yes. Eye contact. Eye contact. But yeah. not too much. Not too much. Mm-hmm. Looking into the eyes. Just kidding. I mean, s- smiling. Yeah, smiling. Quite well, private, but not too much. Again, I guess. Right. I think y'all should just do this. Because that's all the things that don't hold arms. Yeah. Like during an interview, don't do this. Like, I don't want to be here. But, um, so, so, not any like constricting body movements like that. So, like, anything crossed, girls, like, legs crossed. I don't really know how guys are supposed to sit, but I think it's like down and feet flat kind of thing. Women are supposed to sit, okay, when I sit down, I can't lose a chair. Okay. I'm doing an example. Like when I sit, I have this habit. Like, don't do this. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. This is not my most graceful moment. So like, I have this habit of sitting like this. Mm -hmm. This is bad. Like women should sit the dress down, (laughs) but like with one leg, like your heel kind of tucked behind, um, or your hands kind of in your lap. something like that. If there's arm rest and this goes for everybody, lean on one, not both, or not neither. Yeah. Not neither. That is not proper. <laughs> not um, any one of them. Because it gives like very different uh, appearances. If you have like both arms on each arm rest, it seems like you're overconfident, which you don't really want. And if you're not using them at all, it seems like you're kind of scared and like timid and you don't really want to come across that way either. But when you're confident without being too much so. Right. So, okay, I'm going to pick at Courtney for a minute because my first one, I know, I did this my constantly. first point is, is about a Courtney move. Sorry, it's, it's, not, it. it's not a Courtney move. I'm picking at you. You're fine. So what did you all think before you met Courtney and she was like five minutes late? <laughs> to the workshop. <laughs> Did y'all think about think about it? No. I don't think I was gonna take you seriously. Oh, I'm a very punctual person if I'm not early and so it bothered me. But that's Aww. just the way I am. But we still love you Chris. Oh yeah, I mean yeah. <laughs> we know we know I'm you were usually a very punctual person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kirsty doesn't even know I was late. I'm getting a car tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. And I got a phone call from the bank just before I was about to leave my house, and I, like, had to talk to them because I've got to come to the bank and all this stuff. So I am so sorry. <laughs> Y'all are my priority. But I but, couldn't yeah, explain that normally. Definitely so. the first one is to be on time because that's the first impression. And they don't even see you yet. It's like, if you're not there, it just looks yeah, you might get skipped over completely. Yeah. Luckily, y'all can't do that to me. Especially <laughs> if Taylor is hiring you and it's like, well, I'm punctual. You not the next I would Sorry, never <laughs> <laughs> I don't It would be like, <laughs> no, but I'm not bad at you or anything. 
I didn't feel bad. I was like, that was the one thing I can't be late for. Another thing you might want to figure out the location, especially like at College of Charleston, we don't know where every single location is, so it's like some things could be on Greenway, and you don't like what is Greenway, <laughs> and you're like, okay, I gotta figure this out. So just make sure you know the location of things and like, park at least the location before. Oh, I got a story. My cousin, he went to get a job, he had a job interview. <laughs> Or whatever but he didn't like look for the place first he just looked it up on his GPS before his interview he went to the place on the GPS but they relocated so it's like they were like oh you have to be at this office but at that time it was like two minutes before his interview so needless to say you know what happened um adjust your attitude people can feel like you're moving <coughs> Um, like if you're in the presence of others, can't you just tell when somebody just not having a good day? Yeah, so make a comfort, conscious effort to get your mind right for the interview. Like, psych yourself out or something for her. If you smile and you're not happy, it tricks your brain right. into thinking like something, you know, you're happier than you actually are, and it'll put you in a better mood. Psychology, bam. Uh uh. Or you yeah. can play your favorite song before you go into the interview or like in the car on your way there. That's what I do when I'm like, I'm not how happy you'll be when you get that first paycheck. I'm not sure. Oh. Right, right, right. Just think about that. Am I still in your face? Um, so yeah, adjust your attitude. Straighten up your posture like Law said. Um, if you put your shoulders back, but she said, like, don't make it look like you have too much confidence, you know, like, <laughs> like, you know, just stand up straight and look at them. Um, because that says that you're confident and you're competent. So. Smile, like Joshua said. <laughs> um, it says that I'm friendly and I'm approachable. So y'all just smile right now and say I'm friendly and I'm approachable. I'm friendly, I'm friendly and I'm approachable. And, and you believe it, right? So just smile. <laughs> <laughs> right before you go in. <laughs> say that before you go in. Um, here's a quote. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. My Angela. Make eye contact. Um, Cause it shows that you're open and you're interested. And um, I read this tidbit. It was like, try to figure out everyone's eye color. Like that's how you can remember to make eye contact. So everybody you meet, make a conscious effort to learn their eye color. But not too much. You don't want to be out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Raise your eyes. I know this is this seems like a weird thing to do, but um when you open your eyes slightly more than normal, um it's the universal signal of recognition and acknowledgement. So just <laughs> it's probably better when you're actually having a conversation. Yeah, like when they say something that you're like, oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah. Insert that into the conversation. Not the whole time. You honestly don't know that Okay, shaking hands. Um, there's a study that shows <laughs> and um it takes an average of three hours of continuous interaction to develop the same level of rapport that you can get with a single handshake. Now don't quote me on it. How do they but shock? how do you like figure that out? I don't know. People have a lot of time on their hands. <laughs> you can either believe it or just go with it. what it is. Yeah. Well, it never well, hurts to shake hands. Yeah. Well, actually, if you do shake hands, you hope do a confidence form quick, but you right. hope but not so long because it shows like it's overconfident. But do the why my second, say three or five seconds. Right. I don't know, but not too long. you right now how to do that. A few different ways. And then we're gonna let you practice with someone. So don't do so this. So we're gonna like, yeah. I don't like, what's 
You try to grab a pole. <laughs> trying to pull me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who would you say has control of this meeting right now? You. Yeah. <coughs> you don't want, even if you're the one being interviewed, you don't want to give complete control to that other person. So typically this doesn't happen too much, but and it happens a lot more with like a woman than if I were a guy. Like they tend to try to do this. So don't want to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel like that would be the most awkward feeling handshake ever. Yeah. I've actually I've had that happen before. I've had. Like, why times. are you? Yeah. I know. And like, as soon as you bring like that other hand around, that tends to like. Yeah, it's like it's a handshake, it's not a hands shake. All right. So why don't y'all try that right now with someone shaking hands? <coughs> And you don't want your hand to say, I'm with you, with you. You want it to say, it's like firm, but not, <laughs> don't hurt the Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you got a good hand shake. <laughs> How do you shake hands? Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so the, do it firm, so just, but don't shake it. Okay. Do what? Like, <clears throat> nice meet you. Like that. Try again. That was firm. That was good. Yeah, like that. that. <laughs> I was just kissing the handshake. I'm supposed to the handshake. Make sure you don't shake the hand. Make sure you don't shake the hand. Yeah, you can make eye contact during this time. Right, learn their eye color. At that point, you make the request. Smile, handshake, eye contact. They already know how to And then just your eyebrows. Um, Wait, I can't just <laughs> <laughs> I can't function. Okay, leaning in slightly. What did we say that? It means you're like interested and like yeah. want to know what they want to say. Right. Say. You're engaged and you're interested. But don't I'm let that like hunch your shoulders lean. I'm gonna need yeah, to me again. And you want to give them space too. Like this is this is all the her space, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you want to be like two feet away from them. So this is this is not the Little bit. You know, I'm in there. I'm leaning in a little bit. Okay, I'm interested. Alright, so there you go. Two feet away, lean in slightly, you know, to show that you're interested, you're engaged, you're not just like this. And this interviewing is going to take place sitting down, so when they're actually talking and all. So, so this is more like easier for a job fair or yeah, when you're interacting with multiple people or professionals who want to. Pay attention to your audience. Take clues off of them and kind of tailor how you're going to act based on how they are acting. Right. So everyone's different. Rachel mentioned this early, like bragging. You can do a little bragging here, but don't make the conversation all about you. Like, give and take conversation. <clears throat> you want them to talk and you talk a little bit. You know? But don't just like talk about yourself. Um, you have anything to add? Uh, it's just there's usually almost always a very oh, sorry a very small gap in time between the time that you meet someone to the time that you're actually being interviewed, and in that time you can be very quiet and not say anything, and it's gonna be awkward, or you can try to like warm up to the other person. Right. And so one thing I was telling her the other day, we were talking, we were telling different stories. Yeah. And um. I got a phone interview the other day, which is, you know, that's another way you can make an impression and not even Vanessa will get, get to see you. <laughs> but I got a phone call and they wanted to do a phone interview and I was not expecting it. It was kind of out of the blue. And I was at the mall of all places. This was not fun. But, um, so he asked if I had a few minutes. I was like, absolutely, let me just go somewhere a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. So I had to stall for about 30, 40 seconds. That would have been a really awkward phone call for them to listen to silence as I'm trying to like get through mall traffic to find somewhere quiet to sit down, which was the food court by the way. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, so instead of just 
being quiet, he really didn't have anything to say. He didn't know me. I just politely asked how his day was. And I remember he was kind of like surprised that I asked. And he like, he made me repeat the question. <clears throat> I was like, oh, I was just wondering how your day was. And he's like, oh, like just surprised. He's like, it was good. And we just started talking. He like opened up a little bit to me and I opened up a little bit to him. And so by the time I actually got to my place, we were already in a different conversation. I can tell you that was probably the best interview I've ever had. <laughs> just because of that, he just right. warmed up immediately to me. So if you're approachable and outgoing like that, that's going to be to your advantage. Okay. <laughs> well, that's all the tips we have for you. Uh, remember, research the company. Um, make sure your resume is on point. Dress accordingly invest in a nice outfit and those non-verbals smile and make eye contact and don't be late don't say <laughs> i have a tip um i know it's a dying art but they really recognize it and it will go in your folder but handwritten thank you notes for an interview mm. um really really make an impression and i've heard it numerous times over the years so always sending one of those in, thanking them for their time yeah, and stuff like too. that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any tips specifically for people who don't have much or any mm -hmm. job experience? Because my resume won't look that great. Okay. You have volunteer experience. I would yeah. say use that to your advantage. And like the classes you've taken, talk about the skills that you have. Um, like in certain... What classes have you been good in? And be honest, how hard are the campus jobs to get? Because I think that will be like my first job. It depends on the department. Like, library. Sorry, the library. Has anyone worked for the library before? No? Okay. Does anyone have an on campus job? <coughs> oh, of course. How, talk about <coughs> your experience. Like, getting the job, what was the process like? I mean, I also had never had a job before I came on campus. You can talk about Res Life. So, yeah, yeah. I work for Res Life, so just them asking questions, you know, you just want to look professional, look like you're confident, like we said, and, like, tell them about what you plan to do while you're in the, like, work field or what, or the job that you're trying to get. So if you just explain yourself, like, what you want to do and ask the questions effectively, you'll be fine. Definitely research the department. So, like, if you work for us, like, don't just be like, well, I like housing, so I'm going to go apply this job. Mm -hmm. you, on our website, we have what an RA does, what a DA does. Yeah. Well, not R, because I don't work there anymore. Makes sense. It's, it's I mean, I'm not going to apply to be in res life because I live off campus. But. Right, but uh -huh. just for example, yeah. like, any department, if you work for Royal Scholars, it would be nice to know what Roar is about, um, to know what job if you want a specific job like a peer mentor what a peer mentor does talk to a peer mentor and see what i don't know what they do and maybe they can talk to some people and say like hey well that's a great person you should definitely consider him you know make this like now. you gotta use what you got mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> And there's something unique about every single person. It's just figuring out what it is that makes you unique. And you can't ever go into a job thinking you're not going to get it because then I promise you're not going to. Yeah. If you go in thinking that, there's no way you'll ever get it because that's going to come across even if you don't mean for it to. Mm -hmm. So find things that you're proud of, things that you can relate, even if it's volunteer work, extracurricular right. activities. I mean, if you play intramural volleyball, that's something that you can put on your resume. Like, it tells you you're part of a team. Right, team though. Like, if you took a public speaking class, okay, you have presentation skills. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, it just depends on how you make yourself come across. And talking to someone at, like, the Career Center is going to really help you. Because they know things on campus. They can look at your transcript and be like, I'm not sure about this class, because that's really good to put on here. Right. So. And kind of tailor it to the job you want. Mm -hmm. You know? What's, sorry to do a question, what's the difference between a cover letter and a resume? The, um, the cover letter, some jobs ask for a cover letter and you actually write out a letter about yourself and your job skills and why you're applying. A resume just lists out your skills and 
your education, volunteer work. Think of a cover letter like an introduction to mm -hmm. and the resume like that. Kind of like the abstract of a paper. Yeah. yeah. I like had to learn how to do a cover letter this year and it's it's pretty simple. It's like a formal letter. There's plenty of templates you can find for it. But um, mm -hmm. you basically want to just make sure you include why you're interested in the job, and then you can highlight a few of your skills off your resume. What do you mean by good quality paper? Like, do I need like special glossy paper? These actually come from oh, good quality. Yeah, like the heavy paper. There's actually like, a type of paper called resume paper. Yeah, look up. Look for resume paper when you look. Tom has it. By the way, Tom has resume paper. Yeah, we do have resume oh. paper, and you just need to ask. And King Ghost also, I promise, I've had to steal some from that. No. Yeah, you <laughs> can definitely use my paper. And what if you're not entirely sure when you're going to graduate because, like, you're taking a semester off or something like that? Oh, well, with that, you just um, put your expected um, yeah. date, and if it changes, just go back and change it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. like anticipated or yeah. whatever. So, so the Western pair will be like goldish, yellow goldish. For the Western pair, that's what it looks like, yellow goldish. It, it, it looks kind of. I remember seeing like, uh, There's a few different ones. Yeah. I think it's that the one. one, one the one you saying the one we have? Oh no, the one that I see one in the store. I think it was yellow goldish. That's a. Would that be Western paper? Because it says different. It looks kind of off. On it. Sometimes it looks kind of off white. Yeah, off white. Yeah. I think that's like probably grayish a little bit. Okay. Oh, See, it depends. Go, that's says, what it's called. It says that. resume paper, then you know. Oh, okay. Um, so would they be specific? Okay, so you said that I have another question. Would it be specific for us, like what type of, what color you could use on the Western paper? Like I saw you said it's or off-white? It probably doesn't matter. Oh, okay. okay. So, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just it's thought probably, about it because... It's probably just looks good that you use the resume paper, you know? As well, okay. long as it's not like... I wish I did that specific thing. As long as it's not like a crazy color like pink or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't say that. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Like a <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but... I like the way it looks. <laughs> 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 okay. She's like riding with those fuzzy things. Right. <laughs> I love that movie. When is the career center open? Every day, 8 30 to 5, Monday through Friday. Yeah. You should definitely go by there if you're thinking about getting a job. Yeah. They have, and they have other workshops that go more in depth. Even if I'm like starting with from scratch. Yeah. I went by there as a freshman. Yeah. And I they, started building a resume. They will go at that point. more in depth about resume information, you know, and cover yeah. letters and things like that. Yeah, definitely talk with them. One final thing about the Career Center, definitely listen to everything they have to say, but at the end of the day, they will probably tell you this as well, it's not their resume that's going out, it right. is yours. Yeah. So make sure when you send it out, it's how you want it to be. Take everyone else's advice, but follow what you actually believe is best. Otherwise, you're not going to feel great about it. <laughs> Everybody good? But definitely contact the crew.